everything. In this video lesson, we will have an introduction to physiological psychology. Let's define the discipline physiological psychology. Physiological psychology is actually a multidisciplinary um, discipline. It comes from the study of physiology and psychology. Physiology is the study of functions of organs and organ system. Psychology naman is the study of behavior. So when you combine them, physiological psychology actually focuses on the functions of the brain and its effect to the behavior and vice versa. The behavior and its effect to the brain. So dalawa lang ang focus dito. The brain and the behavior. Physiological psychology is also known as biological psychology or behavioral neuroscience. Okay, so take note, the two things that are focused on this study, behavior and the brain. Now, what's the relationship between the brain and the behavior? So, yung una, yung somatic intervention. Kapag sinabing somatic intervention, from cell to the behavior. So, example, when you administer a hormone, there will be a corresponding effect. Kapag nag-administer ka ng, na, halimbawa, testosterone in males, there will be a dramatic change in the, the, in the mating behavior of that organism. So, mas, mas, magiging aggressive, no? Yung mga lalaki when it comes to mating pattern. Another thing, stimulate a brain region. When you stimulate a brain region, there would be a corresponding effect doon sa kanyang behavior. In this in this uh, example, there would be a motor movement. No? Now, kapag naman nagkaroon ng brain lesions, there would be a behavioral deficits naman, no? Kakulangan. Kaya ngayon mga naaaksidente at tinatamaan yung kanilang brain after the recovery, hindi na sila ganun ka-functional because of the behavioral deficits. Minsan, nagiging ano na sila, aggressive, nagiging illogical, or nagiging moody okay, because the brain is damaged. Number two, behavioral intervention naman. Ito naman, baliktad, no? For a certain behavior, there will be a brain affected. Example, when you put a male with a female rat, the brain will be affected. Papano? There will be a change in brain hormones. Siyempre, yung dalawa, lalaki and uh, babae, there would be uh, instinctive na sexual tendency. Kaya yung brain magre-release ng iba't ibang hormones okay, para, para ma-alleviate yung pangangailangan no, for sexual needs. Another example, when you present a visual stimulus, there will be what we call as neuron fire. Halimbawa, pinakitaan mo ng isang traumatic event ang isang tao, makikita mo yung mga neurons, they will be firing and marami mga memories yung maalala no, nung tao na yun. <coughs> and then, give training, so there will be a change in brain morphology. Sabi nila, kapag daw marunong ka ng more than one language, yung brain mo ay mas magiging uh, maraming sulky o yung mga kulot-kulot sa utak. No? So kapag binag, pag nag-train ka, there would be a corresponding change in brain morphology or its um, appearance. Number three, uh, correlation. So ito naman, the correlation between Sorry, the correlation between the brain and the behavior. Example, brain size. Brain size and learning scores. Kapag daw mas malaki yung utak, mas matalino. Kapag uh, ang brain size naman ay maliit, hindi ganong mataas ang kanyang learning scores. Hormone levels and then the mating behavior or, or the strength of mating behavior. Enlarged cerebral ventricles and sometimes... Uh, cause schizophrenic symptoms or yung disease. So, meron din effect. Then, 
uh, biological psychology or physiological psychology is related with many, many disciplines, including anatomy, uh, embryology, molecular biology, endocrinology, um, pharmacology, genetics, and other many disciplines. Kaya nga sa pag-aaral natin dito, we will encounter so many different disciplines. Perspectives. No? Ngayon, paano ba inaaral si physiological psychology? There are different perspectives. Number one, the description of behavior. So, you should know how to describe or report a certain behavior. Number two, we will also discuss the evolution of behavior. Baka naman mapapaliwanag ang isang event because of uh, its evolution. And number three, the development of the behavior through time, the mechanism of behavior, and number five, the application of biopsychology or the study of its anatomy, physiology in relations to behavior. Itong limang perspectives na to, ito yung usually ina-apply para ma-explain ang isang certain behavior. Sometimes, they are used uh, all together. Minsan naman, isa lang ang ginagamit para ma-explain yung isang behavior. Next, uh, in describing a behavior, there are two things that you should take note. Number one, a behavior can be des uh, described using acts or processes. So, acts or processes is uh, what it says. You are describing the process itself. Okay? Yung namang functional terms, you are using uh, scientific terms or a term to describe a certain behavior. Next, evolution of behavior. The evolution of behavior stems from the origin itself. No? So, ito aaralin mo from its ancestry kung sa paano ba nag nagmula ang isang uh, ang isang uh, behavior. Uh, example, an earthworm, eagle, and human all have a similarity when it comes to they have a neuron. No, even though earthworm is a lower form of animal compared to an eagle and a human. And remember, neurons are the basic uh, unit of the brain. So therefore, baka meron tayong similarities ng behavior sa earthworm and eagle. That's uh, evolution of behavior. Uh, yet, some uh, species no, uh, differ from our behavior, of course, kasi they, they evolve differently. Example, yung bat. Uh, bat uh, uses echolocation for their vision, no? instead of actually using their eyes. Development of behavior naman, um, it changes daw over time. For example, the, REMs, the REM and non-REM sleep, the deep and uh, the dream state sleep. Habang bata, mas madami ang REM and non-REM sleep. Pero kapag tumatanda na, nagdi-decrease na ito. So, ito naman ay development of behavior through time. So, how do we apply uh, physiological psychology? Siyempre, lahat naman ng discipline aims to improve human health. Or, we want to contribute by solving diseases or curing diseases and problems. Okay? Example nga dito, ang focus ay yung mga nagsasuffer from insomnia, schizophrenia, and depression or anxiety. So, yan yung gustong masold ng physiological psychology. Level of analysis. Uh, sabi ko nga kaniya, there are different perspectives in analyzing physiological psychology. Uh, one level of analysis or approach is called reductionism. It analyze any phenomenon at more basic level of analysis. So, from general 
from general uh, knowledge or general information, it will be reduced to minute details para ma-analyze ng mabuti ang isang phenomenon. So, yan. Example. In social level, nakita mo na si uh, Pedro ay hindi marunong makisama sa kanyang, sa kanyang grupo or there's something different kay Pedro. Maaring siya ay mas aggressive o maaring naman siya ay napaka-passive or innate. So, uh, let's understand this using reductionism. So, let's reduce the problem of, or what's the problem of Pedro. So, i-analyze natin yung kanyang organ level. So, baka naman may problem sa kanyang brain morphology, brain anatomy, and physiology. Okay? So, kung may problem dyan, it, we will go to the uh, neural system level, study the brain region na. So, tignan natin kung anong part ng brain ang may problem. And then, study again, papaliitin pa ulit, uh, the circuit level, the elaborate system of neurons. Uh, baka may problema doon. Pag wala, go to the single neuron, the cellular level. Baka may problem sa kanyang uh, single neuron. Pag wala pa din, di pa rin masold, or nasold na, but we want to study further, let's study the the functions of the neurons, the synaptic level. Hanggang makapunta ka doon sa molecular level. So kung napansin nyo, paliit ng paliit. Ang tawag dito is the reductionism approach. Alright, so this is video lesson number one.